Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to episode number 10 of my RStudio tutorials here on YouTube. First of all, if this video is helpful to you in any way, shape or form, then please leave a like on this video and furthermore, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to make this channel grow as much as possible so every subscription counts. Please help me out by doing so. So today we're going to have a look at the reliability analysis. And uh, I do recommend watching the previous episodes of my R tutorials because they explain the basics of R. And I will not be covering the basics today. We're just going to simply look at a reliability analysis, how to do that. So uh, to start off, we're going to install a package. And we are going to do that by library and then psych. You need to install the psych, pass, uh, the psych package. If you haven't installed it already and you want to know how to install a package, please watch episode number one. But in this case, I assume that you have already installed the psych pa package. So you press library and then psych between brackets and then control enter. And then we are, can use the functions which are hidden in the psych passage, package. So today we're going to have a look at this data set. It's called the reliability data set and it consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, uh, nine variables which all measure work motivation. So work one, work two, work three, work, work four, etc. They all measure work motivation and we want to make one final skill out of that. So combine them and then measure their mean. But before we do that, we want to know whether they are reliable or not. Are those items reliable? In other words, if you would do this survey again, but then with uh, a thousand other people, would you still get the same answers? And it should be, the answer to that should be yes. If you do your survey again, then you should get approximately the same answers. And that's measured by the reliability. And in R and in SPSS, you can measure that with the Chromebox Alpha. And how you can do that, it's really, really easy. And I'm going to show you right now. So first of all, we're going to attach attach function and then the reliability. Reliability. Reliability and then press Ctrl Enter. And from now on, the reliability analysis data set is attached. So that means that all the functions we do from now on are knows that we're doing it in the reliability data set. So you don't need to press, uh, you don't need to type reliability all the time. So if you want to measure a reliability analysis, you need to make a data frame with just those variables, just those items first. So we're going to make a W1 data frame, which is going to be called W1. And it's going to be uh, data dot frame and then work one, work two, work three, work four, work five, work six work seven, work eight, and work nine, and then close the brackets, and then control enter. And then you can see on the right, in the environment screen, you can see that we've made a data frame, which is called W1, and it consists of nine variables being work one until work nine. And now we go back to the source screen. And what we're gonna do now is really easy. We type alpha, and then between brackets W1, and close the brackets again, and press control enter. And then if we look at our, uh, uh, at our console screen in the bottom, so also known as the output screen, we can see that if we move upwards, we can already, yes, already now see that the raw, you need to look over here, the raw Chromebook Alpha is 0.69. So that means that it's just not reliable because you need a, a reliability of at least 0.7 if you want it to be assumed good. I mean, if it's between 0.6 and 0.7, it's not horrible, but you uh, you would want it to be above 0.7. So you look at the raw alpha if you want to know the reli uh, if you want to know the reliability. And this is the Chromebox alpha. But we're going to take a look if we can improve this. So if we look at the table below, we can see the reliability if an item is dropped. And if we then check out the raw alpha, so the Chromebox alpha, we can see that after work two, it says 0.74, which means that if we delete the work two variable, so we don't take it into account anymore, that the reliability increases and the Chromebox alpha increases from 0.69 to 0.74, thereby making it a good reliability. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna, uh, and then take a look again at the reliability. So we go back to our source screen and we're going to make another data, uh, data frame. It's this time it's called W2 and it consists of data.frame and then work one, but not work two, work three, work four, work five, work six, work 
7 work, 8 work, 9. And do control enter. And then we ask the alpha of W2 and press control enter. And this time, if we then go to the uh, console screen and scroll up, we can see that the raw alpha this time is 0.74. So that means that by deleting the second item and only taking one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, the new Chromebox Alpha is 0.74, and it's actually enough in this case. It's sufficient, it's good. Then we can also take a look at the reliability if items are dropped. And we can see that if we remove any of the remaining items, that the Chromebox Alpha will not be higher than 0.74. So this is the final conclusion. We take the uh, final eight variables being uh, work one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, because uh, variable uh, work two turn out not to be reliable. And this is all you need to do uh, for a reliability analysis. So this is your conclusion. Your final Chromebox Alpha is 0.74, which consists of eight items and the, and the Chromebox Alpha, so the reliability is considered good. Okay, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I think it's actually quite easy. Uh, and if this video was helpful to you, then please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It would mean the world to me. I want to cross the thousand subscribers. Uh, very soon. So please help me out by doing that and I will see you guys on the next tutorial. Ciao